So now it's now it looks like it's going. Now I will tell you, you probably should stay alive because if you go away, yes, there you are. If I go away, what? I'm, I'm not talking, but I'm listening to you. Okay, I'm going to go off the phone. But and then just go ahead and talk to. Him. But let me ask you, what yeah. you what do you see right now? I see your uh, fabric with four sides on. Great. So, um, so those of you that are starting to tune in, um, I'll be going live here in just a few minutes. Um, just hang on to your horses and at one o'clock or top of the hour um, I'll be there with you About seven minutes, you guys, if you're uh, coming in to watch, go ahead and do your fun stuff while we're waiting for everybody to get started.
So um, you're going to have to talk me through that. Hey, everybody, just pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, this is my first time to do all the setup. And so we're using these last four minutes to make sure everything is working like it's supposed to. Currently, we are streaming live on YouTube, but we are not streaming to Facebook. So, John, um, do I go to my browser? Yes, open a browser and then try to open uh, All right, so I'm in the browser, and I'll go to restream.io, and here, when it opens up, I do see that it's, uh, at least it's showing that it's set to go to the quilt show with Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms, and the one with the gold stars in the stream now with the quilt show and Alex Anderson and Ricky Tim's Facebook page. Those are all turned on. So I'm not sure um, what I should do in the eCam to make that happen. Hey, you guys, you are awesome. All of you are awesome. So, John, I have, I, I have everything there. Is there another button on the eCam that I need to be clicking? So you have it in your bottom section saying that the destination is Restream IO. Um, well. I think you should because it's going to. Use well, now I, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, it says that the destination is uh, RP, RTMP. Live Restream IO Live, absolutely. And there's a streaming. What's interesting is that it says here that it's sending the data to Facebook. Ah, oh. all right. You guys, again, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Well, we'll just run with it on the um, YouTube, I guess. Then uh, somehow or another, it could get posted to Facebook later. Is that true? Um, I've got two minutes to sort it out if you want to figure that out. I don't know what else to do. Okay, let me work on it while you're, you're getting ready. And you know what? Um, you can interrupt. You can just call me. We don't mind. We're all friends here. We're all ma ha making happy. So it's, if you want to call me back, you can call me back. Well, and one thing you can tell people is they can see it in the blog. It is running in our blog right now. It is running in the Quilt Show blog? Yes. Well, okay, but if they're watching, they're seeing me on YouTube already, so they don't need to. Probably not. I'm probably not reaching the people I need to. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, let me see if I can contact the screen and find out if there's a problem. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started with everybody, and uh, if you want to give me a call back, we're all, we're all friends here, so... We're not trying to make something professional. We're just doing it because we're all friends. All right, call me back if you need to. If not, it'll be what it is. Thanks. All right, thank you, John. You guys, um, obviously what we're trying to do is stay connected with all of you um, because this is a time when I think we do wanna feel a connection. I personally am isolated. Um, I am in La Vida today, which is where my building is. It's where my business is. But as of five o'clock this morning, um, Colorado went on lockdown. So my employees aren't here, they're now home, and I'm by myself, which is okay. I can deal with myself. I kind of like myself a little bit. Um, but I like myself better whenever I've got you guys. So uh, I'm going to be leaving a little bit later today to leave the small town where I live and head back up onto the mountain where I have my house very isolated away from everything and I have internet there. And so today, um, I'm, I have a makeshift little studio for you here. Um, I don't actually have a sewing studio in the building here, but I'm in the space where I do my quilt retreats. And so I've put up a little table and I've got some things that I'm gonna do for you today. And uh, so while we're 
enjoying each other's company. I think that uh, the quilt show is hoping that we can bring you some love and some compassion and some fun things to do uh, while we're all kind of staying put and uh, and do stay put and stay safe. Okay, so um, so I'm spending a little time here, of course, just chatting with you before I get into the demonstration that I want to do. And um, you probably, if you've uh, been on for a few minutes, you heard me talking to John Anderson because we're using a, a streaming program where it should be able to go to YouTube and to Facebook onto the Quilt Show page and onto Facebook onto the Alex Anderson page and to Facebook on the Ricky Timms page. All of those pages are being populated with this live video so that our fingers can reach out more ways. And because this is the first time that I have been in front of the camera with this new system, and I'm in a whole different state than John and Alex, um, we're having a little technical difficulty getting that stream to go elsewhere. But I see by the comments that all of you guys are coming to me right now from YouTube. I see your comments. So I wanna now just explode comments. Say hello. Say hello to everybody. Say stay safe, everybody. Stay, let's have some fun and stay positive, everybody. I want some hey, hey, hey's coming out there, all right? I know, look at that. Whoa, there's my hand. Are they coming in? Whoa, hello from Indiana. Hello from California. Hey there, Miss Tina. I can hear and see you. Drew Wilcox, or D.E. -D Wilcox. I see you out there, believe it or not, sending hugs and love your way. Oh my gosh, from Garner, North Carolina. Hello. Hey, from SF. Fra is it Franken? Franken Share. Hey, I love this. Hey, from Michigan. Let's see, Ida May. Hello, Ida May. Hello, Doreen. You guys, come on, bring it in, bring it in. Come on, pump it up, pump it up. Tell me a joke, do something. Hello, hi from Boise. Who's smiling right now? Hey, look, I haven't shaved. Is it bothering anybody? I've been busy. Look at my scruff. Keep it, lose it. I'm not getting rid of the beard, by the way. Hey from Columbus, hey from Pennsylvania, hey from Cooper, Texas. Wow. Thank you guys. I'm gonna start my demo at five minutes after, so about a minute and a half from now. So just keep, oh, thank you, I like the beard. Woohoo! thank you, Susan. Appreciate it. Washington State. Hi, somebody smiled. There's Bill, hey Bill, how you doing, Bubba? Bill's one of my buds, I know Bill. <laughs> I also know he just giggled because I called him out. I am keeping the beard, believe me. I'm just the scruff. See up here, all this stuff. I need a haircut too, but you know, I, don't, I give myself a haircut, by the way. I just use some shears and get rid of it. <laughs> Elbow cough. <coughs> yes, absolutely. Salem, Oregon has a hospital supplying the material. They have used masks. That's good news. Everybody can check that out. Thank you, Doreen. Thank you for mentioning Lizzie. I'll talk about Lizzie a little bit during this time, too. Aha! Somebody wants to know how to get a Lizzie Albright coffee mug. Well, here's the truth. Um, we went on lockdown today, and we haven't put the mug on the Ricky Tim's website yet. But the mug is part of a bundle. It's part of a Lizzie Albright bundle at rickytims.com. So if you go to rickytims.com, and I have to remind you guys, my last name is spelled T-I-M-S. It's not T-I-M-M-S. If you give me two M's, you won't find me. My last name is a four-letter word. Remember that, okay? But if you go to rickytims.com, you will see a bundle that includes the book and a tote bag and a lanyard and a button and the mug. And you can pre-order those um, because those are not ready to ship. But if that's what you would like, you can go find those. 
We don't have the coffee mug up as an individual item, but even if we did, right now, I have no one in the warehouse to do any shipping. I only have two employees here in La Vida, and both of them are now at home. So, uh, so anything you do purchase, which would be greatly appreciated, um, it would be not shipped until we're able to do that again. But anyway, there's the Lizzie Albright coffee. I love the shape of this guy, so thank you very much. Will the mug bundle be in the tea? No, it's in the Ricky Tim store. I know it's weird, but you know, Alex Anderson is a thing and Ricky Tim's is a thing and the quilt show is a thing. So at least right now, um, the Lizzie Albright stuff currently is only at rickytims.com. So thank you for asking. I'm ready to get into the demo. Now I want you to know my eyes are having to look way over at your comments. So I have to lean in like this to see them. So when I start doing the demo, I'm gonna probably lose what you're saying if that's okay. But I'll chime in every now and then and look. Marilyn. Hi from Florida. Stay safe. I'm hoping mine ship before you close. Susan, I don't know what you got that was uh, what that was supposed to ship, but if it was a Lizzie Albright thing, those are pre-orders because the book is not out yet. And I'll talk about that a little bit more, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a really fun project. And hopefully, uh, because this will then be recorded, you can go back and watch and, and do it because I doubt that you're going to do it along with me right now. Convergence quilts are something that I uh, kind of discovered on my own way back in about 1997, 1998. Um, and it became my first book and it's still the only book I have that's published that's still in print as a print. I have my kaleidoscope that's print on demand but the, the, the convergence quilts are still going strong. They're fun. They're really fun. Even if you're not an art quilter, this is relatively fun for even traditional people. So I'm going to try to pull my camera down here to the table and show you, what I'm, show you what I'm doing here. I'm hoping that this will work okay for you. So you do not have to use hand-dyed fabrics. Obviously, this is one of my things but your beautiful batiks that kind of move and swim with color, if you could get a couple of those, those would work really well for this. Now I've layered this so that it's in two layers because I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut something that resembles a square. And when I say resembles, I'm not even using my ruler for this, but I will tell you one of the best tips I have when you are cutting without a ruler is number one, don't put your hand down like this and cut. Can you see why? Because there's a blade and there's my thumb. So don't do it like you're holding a ruler. What I like to do is hold the edge of my fabric. Oh, and by the way, when you cut without a ruler, most of you know this is what happens. You start making a wave and eventually that wave will break and you've got a jiggy jog where your rotary cutter went over that. So to avoid that, so you're going to avoid the jiggy jog, and to avoid cutting yourself or even an accident, if you will hold your fabric away from the rotary color cutter, watch, watch what happens here. If I start cutting and I tug, notice that I'm tugging with this hand. If I tug, I don't have any waves. I don't have any ripples at all. And this hand is safe from the rotary cutter, all right? So I'm going to do that again, just cut that up to there. And this square that I'm cutting, this sort of square, is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 inches. So I'm going to come across here, all right? I'm going to come across there. And if I'm curious as to whether it's square or not, you know if you fold it up like this on the diagonal, you can really make it square. So I'm going to go ahead and lose that little bit. Notice where my hand is again. And this little bit. Now you guys that are commenting, comment to yourselves. I truly can't see, but I love that you are. Please keep that going so that we're all in this together. All right, so now I've got two layers of fabric. There's the back side. You can see it's going to be more yellow and green. This is also, um, this doesn't have a lot of change in it. It's orange and red and purple. But on this one, and I'm okay with this little pleat right there. I could have pressed that out of, ahead of time. 
I now want to cut two swoops. So I'm going to cut a swoop that runs like this, and it's kind of like the shape of a tornado. Uh, it's, it's going to be a funnel that gently flows like that, and then I'm going to have this other one come up and actually flow off this edge. So I took it from here, so that little narrow bit was all on one side, and I cut it up that direction. Now, we're going to take these and we're going to flip them. If you are using commercial fabric that is a regular print, you're going to need both of these fabrics right sides up, right sides up. If you're using a batik that doesn't really have a right or wrong side, or if you're using hand dyed fabric, you've got the option to, to switch these all over the place. Now, I'm going to push this back just a tad, and I'm going to separate this into two blocks. So, this block, this block. Come on, top. There we go. And, sorry, I just fumbling fingers here, but I'm in a, there we go. But you get the idea, right? So I've created two blocks that look like that. All right, so you can see what's going on. I'm going to sew these seams together, and I'm going to do that on the camera. Well, probably not on camera because you won't be able to see, but I'm going to sew them. But what I want to tell you now is I told you to cut everything right sides up because they are right sides up. But one of the things that I can do at this stage, if you're using batik or hand dye, is you could turn it completely upside down. You could turn one of them upside down because there's no right or wrong side. So I'm gonna do that for a second. And I'm looking at that design and I'm thinking, well, I'm kind of okay, but both of these are doing this what if in my brain I just rotate this? And I'm doing this now before I sew it because I just want to get the outline. Well, now that's, that's a perfect thing that's doing that. But on the other hand, I'm like, maybe I would like that. So I don't know. I'm going to take it one more time, flip it back to the other side, and put it so that this goes up that direction. And these are arbitrary decisions. You can't necessarily plan it. Just think, I want these two things to come together. That's what's going to happen. So how will they interact with each other if I do that? I think what I'm going to go one more time back to the back side, and I'm going to get this so that it flows up this direction. This is the, the decision I'm going to make for this particular block. Which one? There we go. Make sure you get the right. Don't, don't get your right sides and wrong sides all mixed up. So I'm going to stop long enough to just look at your comments, make sure you're all good. Oh, Ricky, close your rotary cutter. You poor people. Seriously, there's more things to worry about right now. But thank you for keeping me. You didn't close. That's all you're thinking about. I'm just going to go home right now. I'm just going to go home. Hello from Tennessee. I don't like lockdown like Ricky and Alex. I don't like lockdown like Ricky and Alex. I do. Oh, I agree with you. I do like Ricky and Alex. Thank you. I love you too. Whew. You quarantine in three weeks. Stay there. Stay well, sweetheart. Stay there. All right, so I'm going to sew these blocks together. I am going to come back down. I'm going to put this one like we normally do, this is right sides up. I'm gonna put them right sides together. Now, I'm not gonna mark these seams. I don't have anything to do with this. These also did not have seam allowance when they cut. So I'm going to sew with a much narrower seam allowance than I normally would. All I need to do is stitch this down. You don't need a full quarter inch seam for that to hold, but you do need enough of a seam so that it stays. So I will be right back sewing these. 
Ducks and chicks and geese better scurry When I take you out in my surrey When I take you out in my surrey With the fringe on top So now, I'll just let you know, I'm almost done with this first scene. By the way, you guys, I know you can hear me. This project is re really less than an hour. You're not going to spend much time. I want to show you the seam allowance. That is smaller than a quarter of an inch, okay? But it's plenty big. I also want you to know that the nature of the beast is it may not match at the top, but even if you do match it at the top, by the time you finish that seam, it's not going to match at the bottom right here, okay? It's not going to match there. And you see how mine is only maybe a half an inch off? Don't be surprised if you sew it and it's an inch or an inch and a half off. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. The only thing that matters is that you get it flat. And once I sew this second one, I'm going to go over and press this. So I'll put the second one right sides together oh what a beautiful morning oh what a beautiful day i've got a beautiful feeling everything's going my way there's a bright golden haze on the meadow there's a bright golden haze on the meadow the corn is as high as an elephant's eye And it looks like it's growing right up to the sky <laughs> One! That's number one. Gonna go to the other side, grab it, and get it done as well. And forgive my singing, but I'm just trying to entertain you. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. I write the songs, I write the songs. Well, my music makes you dance. Gives the spirits to take a chance. Do, do, do. And I wrote some rock and roll so you can move. Music fills my heart. Well, that's a real fine place to start. It's from me, it's for you, it's for you, it's from me. It's a worldwide symphony. How many of you want me to play the piano in a minute? How many of you want me to play the piano in a minute? I'm going to be looking for that. Because I do have a piano here. All right. Ra, 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 uh, uh, ro, ma, ro, ma, ma, ga, ga, ooh, la, la. Caught in a romance. How many of you know that I'm insanely in love with Lady Gaga? Some of you who are my fans. Some of you who know me, you know I dearly adore the Lady Gaga. I do, I do, I do. I guess I need to see a raise of hands out there on who loves Lady Gaga. Better check that out. Lady Gaga, me, me, yes, me, yes. Oh, please, yes, please must be the piano. Lady Gaga, play piano, please. I will, I promise I will. <laughs> Joan, you make me happy. Thank you, Joan Thomas. That makes me very happy. God bless you. Prayers for everyone and truly, truly, truly be wonderful. To I will play the piano. Go back to show things. Wait a minute. Rita. Oh my God, you're breaking my heart. It's my Lady Gaga. I've only seen her three times in concert, by the way. All right, I got to go press. I got to go press these and I'll be right back, okay? Entertain yourselves during this time.
So, let me, hey, we're on Facebook now. I see some Facebook people. Hey, Facebook people. Goodness gracious, thank you for joining in. We're having some kind of fun. All right, so now I'm going to bring this back down for you guys to see. Pull it back a little bit so you can all see what's going on. So here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I don't really care about any of these wonky edges right now. And I have to look and see what my thing is doing. That's right. I want that to go there. But I could still change it if I wanted to. I, goodness gracious. I think I'm going to go this version, all right? So once I've decided, I want you to think this like a book. Now, I know I'm working upside down. But I want you to have the book open. And this is the back page of my book. I want to close the book, all right? This is the back of the book. There's the front of the book. And this is the spine of the book. This was where the hinge was. So we're going to start by cutting right here. Let me get my ruler, by the way. Mm. Ah. Let me just point out a little branding for Miss Lizzie. Y'all are going to all be in love with Lizzie. If you're not, I'm going to be so disappointed, but I promise you will. All right, so I'm going to trim on a line. I'm just going to find a line on my ruler, I mean on my mat, and I'm just going to cut. Now, I know I've got to cut off a lot because I can see what's going on right down here. I just need to trim everything kind of straight. So I'm going to cut that. I'm also going to cut the top of the book. So make sure I got everything covered here I'm gonna cut a little top off just to square off the top I do not need to cut off the right side this way over here I don't need to cut off the bottom now I'm gonna cut one one and a half two two and a half three one one and a half I am using the lines on the mat I know that's a big no-no for a lot of people but it doesn't matter in this case so one inch two inch so I'm very careful about making sure I'm cutting one one and a half oh I almost went two and a half two all right one one and a half two so there's a half one two so that's two and a half and guess what's gonna come next one, two, three. So one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. All right. Now, remember I closed the book, right? This was the spine. So I closed the book. I realize I'm upside down, but you guys can figure that out. I want to start with the spine, all right? And all I want to do is open the book back. So there's this one that hinged back over. I want to take the next one and I want it to go back in place right here. Do you see how I'm rebuilding the puzzle by putting these top strips back off on this side of the project? You guys are going to love this. Get ready for the magic. Seriously, get ready for the magic. All right. Now, again, I know I'm working upside down, but you guys can figure this out. I'm going to start over here and I'm going to say 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. That's odd numbers. If you need to use a little sticky note, you can. My brain says you can do this. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Right? So that's all moving across from left to right just like we read. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 and you simply put them in order. One, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh! Ah! Is that not awesome? Okay? Now here's what's crazy. You have no seams to match anywhere. All you have to do is start sewing 1 to 2, 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 to 8 to 9 to 10, 11 to 12. Sew this all together, then you press it, and then you can square it and add borders. Am I happy? Are you happy? Seriously, this has been so much fun. Now, this is a little wall quilt, right? As you see it, I would then put some borders on this. So I would, you know, put the borders on, maybe make some swoopy borders or something. And you've got a little lovely little wall quilt. You could also do these and you could make some really funky placemats, but you guys are smart. If you made a bunch of these, right, and you cut them all the same size, you could make a throw. This is just your rectangular block. How wide do you want it? How tall do you want it? And you have something that's very cool and it's very fast. You've watched me do this and I'm talking. If I wasn't talking, this would have gone faster. I now have 12 seams to sew, maybe 11 really, have 11 so straight down, pretty easy. How quick do you think that's going to be? Yay? So let me see what we got going on here. How fun. Love it, love it. Cool, cool. This is called Divide and Conquer Convergence. It is in my Convergence book, which I do sell on my website. Um, but you don't need the book. I mean, it's always good to get one, but uh, you've learned how to do it. That's all you need to make this quilt mind blown. That's cool, Misty. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, you can watch it again, uh, Joanne. Watch it again. Just found me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Shirley. You'll be able to watch this again as soon as we're done with live. But uh, I feel like I'm going to show you, because I promised you um, music. Well, I wasn't planning to, but why not, right? I'm in my studio, which is currently a disaster. Now, when I say studio, it's not my sewing studio. It was an art gallery studio when I bought it. And this is where I do my quilt retreats. We have boxes that came back from Quilt Luminarium that have not, they've just been thrown around. So I'm gonna do my best for you not to see the mess that's in this studio. But I wanna take you over to a place and show you something that is amazing. So let me set this down. I want you to look at this. I want everybody to start telling me what it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till five people tell me what this thing is. Da 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 I see piano, piano, player, piano, roll up, piano, 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 piano. All right. This is going to absolutely blow your brain. This instrument was made either in 1899 or 1900. It was only made for two years. There's no other ones in the world like it. Only one company did it and it was only made for two years. It looks a little bit like a player piano. It looks very much like an up upright grand piano, but there are three pedals at the bottom that look just like piano pedals. I'll actually show you, I can show you. You can see the pedals down there, right? Kind of hard to see, but that's the pedals. Three pedals, just like a regular piano. All right. I'm going to start pumping because
It's crazy. They only made these guys for two years. It's a full 88 keyboard. It looks like an upright player piano or grand piano, and it's a pump organ. Now, I have to tell you, it's not mine. Um, I have a really good friend who, he and I both have a love affair with pump organs, and he found this precious item and didn't have a place to put it. So we've stored it for now in the gallery in the studio here in La Vida, Colorado. So I think it's absolutely delicious. So I hope you enjoyed that. How about some piano? All right, I could do the piano. Are you guys doing okay? Hanging in there? By the way, this studio where I'm at right now is the studio where the quilt show.com, where the quilt show was first taped. We taped in this room right here. If you go back and look at the old shows, you will see that fireplace. And there's my piano that I played many times before. Um, on the quilt show because we had the piano here in the studio when we left the studio We no longer were really able to ah, Don't want that to fall over ah because that's my computer um, When we left here and went to the other studios It was just too much to try to get a piano. So I don't play the piano on The quilt show anymore. So anyway, I think I'll do a I don't know what I'll do for you. I'm gonna do this um, it's not mine. Most of you will recognize it, and I hope it will be something heartwarming for you. for everybody all right now I gotta read some comments ah thank you you're welcome very much happy to be here with you and Margaret hi Margaret good to see you I know Margaret some of you I don't know but I can promise you I really wish I did thank you so much you guys You realize you're about to make me cry. Thank you so much. Hey, Cindy. It's good to see you too. Cindy's one of my oldest longtime quilting friends. It's good to see you. God bless you all. So, uh, I gotta do a couple things here before I forget. I need to let you know that the quilt show is having a stay in place for six months. It's in 1995, and that's a really slashed rate for you guys, but 
the quilt show has been such an amazing thing for us to bring the world's honestly the most talented quilters to you and to be honest to be able to watch them from your homes this is a great time for that Carly Porter is the current show and oh my god love 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 Carly Porter and what she is doing um, just you're going to love it so if you do take time to join us we would love that tomorrow Alex is doing uh, pressing matters at 10 a.m. Pacific so she will be doing that tomorrow and if, for those of you it'll be 11 o'clock in my time and 12 o'clock central and 1 o'clock on the East Coast now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my love affair with Lizzie Albright and I want you guys to go check out Lizzie Albright. Lizzie Albright is the brainchild of Kat Bowser and she uh, is a friend of mine, Kat, and I have known each other since the 80s. And Lizzie is meant to be, well actually I don't need to tell you everything. There's an introduction to this on YouTube and you can find the Lizzie Albright playlist so that you can watch the introduction and then you can listen to me read the story. The novel is not out yet and what you're going to be listening to is the pre-final edits. So you're going to get privy to a book that's not even out yet because I still have a few little changes. But Kat and I talk about each chapter with commentary on what we were thinking as we were writing this book. So I encourage you to go just get the Lizzie Albright playlist. Hey, hey, hey. There she is, right? Go to the playlist on YouTube. A lot of you are on YouTube right now. And find the Lizzie Albright playlist and just hit play. You don't need to watch. You just need to listen. So th we're calling them vid pods. I need the entire quilt world to get involved in Lizzie. And you're going to want to know why. In the Lizzie Albright story, which is very much Harry Potter meets the Wizard of Oz meets Alice in Wonderland. It's magic, it's fantasy, um, it is fabulous for all ages. If you've got an anywhere from an eight-year-old to 88-year-old, they're going to want to read this book. But Lizzie is having her 10th birthday in 1964. A whole bunch of you are close to 10 years old in 1964, okay? So that's where the story starts. In the story, near the first few chapters, we're going to learn about a quilt. And the quilt was made during the Depression. And honestly, I just got through reading that chapter because it will post in about two days. Excuse me while I wipe my nose. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. Um, I haven't even been around anybody. Um, but Lizzie is going to discover this quilt made during the Great Depression. And the chapter, chapter 7, chapter 7 reveals the quilt. And Lizzie learns about the Depression and how people were scrambling just to make blankets, quilts, you know, out of feed sacks and stuff like that. But Lizzie learns a huge lesson from this. I wrote that chapter maybe four months ago, and the thing that crazy it was crazy last night when I was reading it, I was like, oh my gosh, Lizzie's granny was making these quilt blocks while she was worried, while she was struggling, her family was struggling because they were of wealth. And the quilting is what got granny through that bad time. And here we are facing dark days and we're using our quilting and our love of creativity to help us through. And I just thought it was so prophetic that that chapter came along. Now I need to tell you the, the book is not about a quilt. It's not at all about a quilt. The Wizard of Oz is not about a tornado, but the tornado is the thing. It's a huge thing and it's the thing that gets uh, Dorothy from the farm to Oz. In my story, the story that I'm writing with Cat Bowser, the quilt is the thing that gets Lizzie from the world she knows to the world of the story. So I hope that you will all read Lizzie Albright. 
Z Albright on YouTube, okay? And, and you can get insights to all of that. And yes, you can stay home and quilt and stay safe. So I see all of that. I, uh, I see Marilyn's going piano or piano. Are you begging for more piano? If I was to give you one more little snippet of piano, would you all guys feel like you had a good day spending your time with me? How many pages? Oh my God. How many pages will the quilt be? I'm not sure what you're asking there. Um, oh, we're doing a pattern of the quilt. So you will all be making the quilt with me. I have designed fabrics with Ben Artex. Those fabrics will be shipping right away so that you can not only make the Lizzie Albright quilt, but you can make it with the fabrics that I have described in the book because I described the fabrics in the book the way I designed them for real. So you will be able to do all of this. We're gonna have a huge Lizzie Albright fan club. So if you're on Facebook, look for the fan club and look for the Lizzie Albright page because there's a you can like the page and stay with me. And uh, so I already have, but it would make it even better. Play the piano. Oh, you guys are so great. All right, I'm going to go play something kind of fast and upbeat. And uh, I've, I've shared enough with you about Lizzie for today, but I do really hope that you will get, um, get excited about Lizzie because I want you sewing quilts with your grandkids or your great nieces and great nephews. And we'll have a whole sewing curriculum that will come out with... Um, a whole sewing curriculum that will come out for kids with the Lizzie Albright brand. So, yay for all of that. Thank you for being with me today. And let's see, what will I play for you now? Ah, it's been a while, but I'll give this one a shot. Okay, up top. <laughs> guys do me a favor please love each other smile for each other say your prayers because we need to do that and quilt 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 okay we're in this together stay safe everyone god bless you all thank you for joining me today and i'll be back soon as i can okay god bless you all thank you bye-bye